All right, this is another, uh, <laughs> Lucy says, <laughs> prompt if you haven't watched anything I've made. Um, one of my, my, my youngest, <laughs> she just asks these questions and says these things that prompt this conversations that are epic, epic. And the Lord just unpacks stuff really quick and really concisely because her and Savannah are 10. So it's not over your head stuff, but it's awesome. But it just, I'm going to try to do this quick. So it came up in my memories yesterday on Facebook. And it was funny because I was just having this other conversation that went hand in hand with it. So that's what I'm going to share real quick. A couple of years ago, we had been reading through the Jesus Storybook Bible, which I highly recommend if you haven't read it. Um, even if you don't have kids, read it. It's beautiful. Why is it beautiful? Because the author understands that the entire Bible, all the Old Testament points to Jesus. It's all pictures and stories of him, come, him to come. It's beautiful. But here's the thing, we're people and we, we don't see things fully. So even though we might have giftings and talents and God definitely uses us, we're still going to miss some things until we're with him face to face. Like I look at other videos I've made and I was like, oh, I've learned so much more than that. Like that wasn't full any, right? Okay. So we're reading through it and it's the story of um, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. God bringing them out in the, in the desert. Now the person who's writing this is talking about how, um, how hot it was and they didn't have water and all this. And he says they didn't, um, their feet blistered from the sand. And Lucy stopped me and she goes, that's not true. Classic stole kid. because <laughs> It's like their mama. Wait a second. That's not true. And I looked at her because I knew it. I was, but you know, you just, oh, you want to see your kids get this stuff. And I said, why isn't it true, Liz? Lucy? And she goes, oh, no, no, no. She goes, mom, God brought them out. None of them were weak or sick coming out. <laughs> He's like, why would he let their feet blister? That doesn't sound like God. That, like, why would he forget that? <laughs> so I opened up to Deuteronomy where we were reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible and reading the story um, again in Deuteronomy. And God jumped out this word. Um, if you don't have the Pocket Sword app, I cannot even highly recommend it enough. It changed my whole life. Um, you can private message me if you need to know how to change the preferences. But basically, it's this app that has the King James Version of the Bible, but you can update the module so it shows you the Strong's um, Hebrew and Greek dictionaries. So when you click on each word, you can see what the original is and where it was first mentioned and all that. It's epic. So epic. So anyway, God jumped out a word in the page and it was, um, and their feet did not swell when he was telling the story. I think it was Deuteronomy 7 and how all that God did. And he said, even their feet didn't swell. Well, that word is blister. Their feet didn't blister. And in that moment, I was able to give Lucy feet to stand on because she knew it, but there was her foot. That was the word. That was what God said. She was right. He took so good care of them. Even their feet didn't blister. Right. Well, last weekend when I was sitting here where I was going to bed, I tried to listen to um, some different messages from some pastors that like I see literally sit with the Lord because that just that's what I want. That's what I want to be full of. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to go down there. But I was listening to this man that I have uh, respect for and um, he was preaching. He was talking about no fly. It was going to be a good message. Nothing wrong with the message, but he just was talking about Goshen. If you're not familiar with Goshen, Goshen is the land in Egypt where first Joseph, who had the dream, Joseph in the Technicolor dream coats. <laughs> Obviously that's not biblical, but comes from the story of Joseph who, uh, you know, had the robe of many colors. His brothers were so jealous of him. They threw him in a pit. He became a slave. He was bought by slave traders, ended up being thrown in the prison, interpreted dreams, made it up to the, he was second in command of Pharaoh. Pharaoh gave him all the land, right? And he gets these, he interprets these dreams about this famine that's coming and he has this wisdom from the Lord on how to do it. And he's gathering the grain and uh, just getting provisions for this time that's going to be hard. Well, Jacob comes back with the brothers, brothers first, obviously. Hold on, don't want to get this wrong. But the whole point of it is, when they get reunited with Joseph after all of these years, when Joseph forgives them for what they did because he realized God had a bigger plan. Yes, it hurt like hell, excuse my language, to go through what he went through, to be disowned by his brothers and bought and lived through all of that. 
but God meant it for good. And he was in the middle of the good. Well, he said, come stay by me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> come live by me in the land of Goshen. <laughs> and he gave them this land and Pharaoh said, yeah, have Goshen. They were shepherds. Like they had cattle and this was beautiful land. <laughs> this was their land. So then you read Exodus and you see what happens in the plagues and you see the protection of the Lord over Goshen, where they were, right? So I'm listening to this pastor and he's talking about how horrible it was there. And um, I just like everything stirred inside of me of no, just like Lucy. No, do you know my God? Like, do you know what he did? Like, do you know his love? Like, no, Goshen was different. In Goshen, when there was the darkness on the earth, guys, oh, read, oh, this is another aside. I'll come back to it, but read the story of the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Read it. Read it like you've never read it. Read it as if it actually happened, as if it line by line actually happened, and something will unlock in you, and you will see it did, and it will change you. And you know what happens when you're changed by the word? The enemy sees it. And he can no longer take the ground that he took in that area of your life. He just can't. Okay, so I am just, I was just thinking about that this morning and how we have to see God the way that he actually is and how many people like I see all over who say they love the Lord, but they see them, they see him through this lens, this hard lens. And it's just it's crazy. And what the Lord did for me one day, he said, turn your glasses around. And I knew what he meant. We look at the cross from the foot of it. Undeserving, unholy, unbelievably in awe of what Jesus did. And we live our life thinking we should live it like that. Like we deserve the things that come. You know, one day we'll be We'll be with them and it'll all be well. And whatever you want, Lord. We think we think saying that from is a place of humility, meaning come what may. But there is a place of humility that stands up and says, wait, wait. There's more to the story. He not only hung on that grave, on the, on the cross, but he got off of it. And he rose up and he had all the keys to the kingdom. He had all authority above the earth, on the earth and below the earth. And then he gave it to us. So we don't have to say come what may anymore. We have to bring the kingdom on this earth as it is in heaven because he gave us a gift and then he gave us authority to walk in it. And he showed me, turn the glasses around. We no longer in great gratitude and complete humility are meant to stand at the foot of the cross and look at Jesus. We are meant to look through Jesus back at us and back at this world. That will change everything. Because when a good father knows that his people can never do what they have to do in order to be right in his sight, he longs for them so much. He is so tired of this system of them having to sacrifice in order to be right in his eyes because it's been wrong for all history. I think people think that God loves it. He hates it. He just wants to be with us and he is sick of things in the way. So what did he do? He put on flesh and he came down. He sent his son and his son died in our place so that now he doesn't see us as somebody deserving of death anymore. Now he sees us through the eyes of his son, looking out at us, hanging on that cross. He has different glasses now. Now he says, stand up, go tell them, go run. I made you well. I made you right. Like <coughs> I am well able to bring you through the desert that the world is walking through and make your feet not even blister. <coughs> Guys, read these stories that we've heard, Bible stories. Man, I grew up in them that you, you can get so desensitized to them because they become stories instead of actual things. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel that get thrown into the fiery furnace for worshiping the Lord? They're in a furnace 
think of the Holocaust. Think of what what the Jewish people, I was going to say live through, no disrespect, had to endure and millions lost their life. They were in a fiery furnace. They should have died because the people that threw them in burnt up before they even got all the way in. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't, not only didn't burn up, but the <coughs> excuse me, shackles that were holding them when they were tied to go in were loosed. And when the people looked in the fire at them, they saw another one, a fourth man in the fire. One is, is the son of God, meaning the angels. They, the people around them who did not trust in the Lord, who didn't trust in the God that Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Abednego, they saw an angel in there. And then when they walked out of the fire, they didn't even smell like smoke. Guys, I feel the Lord so strongly say, quit walking through the fire with chains on like the rest of the world. <laughs> it's hot down here, guys. It's hot down here. But we are meant to stand up and to walk with the fourth man in the fire that came and walk out of it not even smelling of smoke. Whatever area of your life you have been looking up at the cross and feeling unworthy and feeling this is just what it is and come what may, I am releasing over you the Lord's heart to put on new glasses, the glasses of how he sees you looking out at yourself through the lens of the eyeballs of your Savior who bore it, who went through hell on earth in your place so that you could experience life on this earth and with him for the one to come that is beyond your wildest dreams. He didn't let their feet swell. He put them in a land of Goshen so that he would be near them, so that they would be protected. There is protection on the table, child of God. There is amazing blessing in this time, right now, even in the midst of what is going on around us, because God loved us and gave his son so that now whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It is so much more than a word you memorized in Sunday school. It's life.